Remember, a Hallmark card when you carry enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark cards bring you an unusual true story on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Here is our distinguished host, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Tonight, we bring you another true story of an inspiring moment in the life of a real person. As William Shakespeare put it, some men are born great. Some men achieve greatness, and some men have greatness thrust upon them. Tonight, we salute a man of the latter category, for Edwin Laurenton Drake, grandfather of the American petroleum industry, might never have made his marks on the tablets of history had he not been the lucky holder of a free pass on the Pennsylvania Railroad. How this all came about is the remarkable true story we're going to tell you tonight. Here now is Frank Goss from the makers of Hallmark Cards. The next time you want to send your best wishes in the most gracious way, just visit a store where Hallmark Cards are sold. You'll always find Hallmark Cards with new ideas, new designs and colors, with new ways of saying what you want to say, just the way you want to say it. And, of course, the hallmark on the back of your card says something, too. It says, you care enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore is appearing by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor picture Mogambo, starring Clark Gable and Ava Gardner with Grace Kelly. And now Mr. Barrymore brings you tonight's exciting story on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. <laughs> The story of Edwin Laurentine Drake is a fabulous story. So fabulous, you, you may find it hard to believe. But it's true. Uh, let's drop back almost a hundred years. The time is April 11th, 1858. And the place was, is an average American home. Oh. 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 I'm coming, dear oh. heart. Oh, I've got him again. Cob wobblies in my stomach. Oh, now, don't you worry, dear heart. Oh. I've just the thing for you. What's that? Seneca oil. It's a modern-day medical miracle. Oh, no, that looks awful. Here, now. No. Open wide. I don't think... Down the uh, red line. I don't want... Oh. 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 oh, that tastes terrible. Oh, yes, but don't you feel better? Hmm. Huh? Oh, I suppose. Let me see that bottle. Seneca oil, magical curative from oil creeks owned by the Pennsylvania Rock Oil Company, New Haven, Connecticut. Price one dollar. But, dear, it's all the rage. A modern-day medical miracle. <laughs> Gentlemen... After conferring with the chemist I mentioned earlier in our meeting, we came to the conclusion that there may be even more uses to which this petroleum liquid may be put. Our chairman will explain what we have in mind. Uh, yes. To date, we have been getting the stuff off the top of an oil creek out in Titusville, Pennsylvania. Got a couple of local men out there skimming the oil off on a blanket. Now, working this way, they average two... Three barrels a day. Now, we want more than that. So we're sending a man down there to look the situation over. One of our stockholders, Mr. Edwin Drake. Who? Mr. Edwin Laurentine Drake, a man uh, of integrity and character. Mr. Drake, I believe you have the necessary papers and so forth. I have, Mr. Chairman. Uh, then let me wish you Godspeed, a pleasant journey, 
And a safe return. Well, thank you. And uh, <clears throat> uh, believe me, Mr. Chairman, and you other gentlemen, I will do my best to justify the trust you've placed in me. I'll not let you down. We believe in you, Mr. Drake. Well, now, who in tarnation was that? Uh, <clears throat> rather minor stockholder. We found him suitable for the job. Yes? Why? Well, as you know, this oil venture is pure speculation. We don't want to spend any more than we have to. Yes, but why send Drake? We want to save money. Prior to his retirement, Mr. Drake was a conductor of the Pennsylvania Railroad. He's the only man in this company who has a free pass to Titusville. <laughs> Mr. Drake, I couldn't say whether it's a real oil or not. Tastes like whale oil. Yeah, that's so. Tell you my theory, Mr. Drake. I think it's from the coal. Now, where do you see that? Well, we've got some coal around these parts, and I think the oil kind of gets squeezed out of the coal by the weight in the ground. That would explain why there's so little of it. Hmm. Hey, couldn't it be that there's so little because nobody's ever really dug for it? Dug for it? Well, yes. <laughs> I don't think you heard what he said, mister. He said there's very little of it, of the oil. Yeah, because no one ever bothered to dig deep enough for it. Well, mister, I tell you what. Here's a shot. Go on, take it. It's a question from me to you. Just you go right ahead and dig. And when you get all through digging, I'll send the wife around with a bottle of setting oil for your aching back. <laughs> Drake. Well, uh, perhaps dig is not the proper word, gentlemen. I, I I believe the most proper term would be drill. And if I'm not mistaken, it has been discussed before. Sure, I put a stop to that talk. Here, brain waste of money. Well, allow me to elucidate. Yes, pray do. <sighs> now then, while exploring the area which lies about Titusville, I came upon a crew of men who were busy constructing a salt well. Uh, their method of operation was, to me, unusual and indeed provocative. Mr. Drake. Yes? You did clear up that matter of land titles we sent you for. Yeah, I did. Thank you. <coughs> May I uh, proceed? Yes, do. I will. It seems that far beneath the surface of the land in that region lie great subterranean lakes of salt water, which, raised to the surface, may be evaporated, leaving a residue of salt crystals, which are marketed at a reasonable margin of profit. These salt wells are not dug, but drilled. And it is this drilling process which I propose to utilize in my search for the lakes of oil. Oh, my sainted aunt. What lakes of oil? I have a theory, gentlemen. A theory? Which is shared by several eminent men of science. Mr. President. Must we? Uh, I suppose so. Go on, Mr. Drake. The theory being that petroleum is not a product of coal under pressure, but rather an organic compound left over from ages long past, and that this petroleum has, over the eons, come to seek its own level, to gather in great subterranean pools or, or, or lakes. And you want to drill holes down to these theoretical lakes and pump the stuff out? Precisely. Oh, my sainted... Now, see here, sir. What? I don't like your attitude, manner, or tone of voice. Well, now, isn't that a shame? <laughs> the ex-railroad conductor doesn't like my tone of voice. <laughs> and uh, in thinking this entire matter over... I cannot help wondering if you are really the proper gentleman to invest in this project. What's that? I believe you heard me. Well, now, let's not get hasty, Mr. Drake. Let's talk this over. That gentleman over there may be inclined to scoff, but uh, personally, I'm a gambler. I'd like to hear a little more about this. Well, there's little more to tell. I am convinced that petroleum, in amounts to stagger the imagination, lies beneath the face of western Pennsylvania. The men who have the vision and the daring to bring it out will stand to make millions, to perhaps open an entire new field. Uh, not uh, selling it for medicine. You seem to forget. Your own chemist has said petroleum can be used as an illuminant, a lubricant, a wonderful road-building material, and perhaps for hundreds of other as yet undiscovered purposes. Petroleum has a future, gentlemen, and... Uh, with or without your aid, I'm going to find it. Well, well, well. 
Hey, Mr. Drake, I'm with you. Well, I'm not. Gentlemen, gentlemen, that please. Gentlemen, we seem to be divided into two camps, gentlemen. Investors and speculators. Put me down as a speculator. Five hundred dollars worth. Now, gentlemen... The Pennsylvania Rock Oil Company cannot betray its investors by embarking on hazardous adventures. However, I suggest that here and now we form a separate company for the sole purpose of backing Drake. We'll call it the Seneca Oil Company. And it will give me great pleasure to purchase the first share of stock issued in Drake's dream. What can I do for you? <clears throat> My name is Drake, Edwin Laurentine Drake. I understand you're a salt well driller. That's right. I'd uh, like to engage you. Just a minute. <clears throat> uh, you want me to drill a well? Yes. Uh, that is, uh, if we can come to some sort of agreement as to price. I always charge the same, Mr. Drake. Three dollars a foot. Thousand foot guarantee. Thousand foot guarantee? I, uh, I don't understand that term. Well, short water's a funny thing. Suppose I get my rig all set up, get my helpers out, and then we hit water at, say, uh, 20 feet. That's only sixty dollars for me. I, I'd kind of lose out. Ah, I see your point. Very well, sir. Thousand foot guarantee. And, um... Uh, I might as well tell you now, we're not drilling for salt water. We're going to drill for oil. Say, uh, uh, say that again. We are going to drill for the petroleum oil which seems to be so prevalent in this locality. When do you want to start uh, drilling for oil? How would six weeks from now suit you? Fine, that suits me just fine. Very well, sir. By hand. This is an historic moment. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure is. Go <laughs> <laughs> go on, go on. So, so then what happened? Uh, he shakes my hand and looks me deep in the eye like this. <laughs> and then he leaves. <laughs> yep, yep, I remember the fella. He came in there talking about how he was going to dig for oil. I offered him a shovel, didn't I? Didn't I, Jones? <laughs> so, so what are you going to do? Nothing. It's clear the man is loony. If he wants to go on thinking I'm going to drill for oil, let him. Let him have his dream. But as far as actually doing it, I... It's to me like we're going to have us some real fun in this here. <laughs> you see, this man, Drake, is about the funniest thing we've seen around these parts for quite a while. <laughs> just a moment, we return to the second act of the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Did you ever analyze how your mind works when you're selecting a gift? First, you pick up an article and say to yourself, I like this. Next is, will Mary like it? You see, every gift we give is a combination of what we like plus what we think the receiver will like. It's the same with the Christmas cards we choose. Only here, instead of one receiver, our card is our Christmas gift to a whole host of friends. That's why you'll see so many discriminating people taking plenty of time to select just the right Christmas card. And why they prefer to make that selection from the Hallmark Christmas card albums. Every year, the cards in the Hallmark albums have been the style leaders. They are always the card you see displayed most prominently in your friends' homes at Christmas. And this year, the Hallmark Christmas collection is more exciting and varied than ever before. You'll want to allow yourself time to enjoy each beautiful design before you decide on the one you want imprinted with your name. So why don't you make a date with yourself right now 
to visit one of the fine stores where Hallmark cards are sold and select the greeting that will be your Christmas gift to all your friends this Christmas. And remember, a Hallmark card always receives a special welcome for to everyone, everywhere. That Hallmark on the back of the card you send means you care enough to send the very best. And now Lionel Barrymore brings you the second act of our true story of Edwin Laurenton Drake. Edwin Laurenton Drake was a man of many parts. To the speculators back in New Haven, Connecticut, he was a dreamy-eyed visionary who just might be heading up a golden trail. To the backwoods men around Titusville, Pennsylvania, he was an infinite source of fun and merriment. And to his wife, he was a figure of tragic greatness. A man of frustrated genius. History has proven the wife to be right. But I'm sure there were times when she wished Mr. Drake had stayed home in New Haven. Confound him! I say confound him, one and all, to everlasting perdition. Just because I was a railroad man, they won't listen to me. You mustn't take on uh, so, dear. Here, let me fix you some tea. I do not want tea. I want justice. I spent eight months chasing that first man, that sniggering dolt of a well-borer, chasing him over half the state, listening to his oaths and promises. And to what end? To the end that you and I have been practically laughed out of this miserable forsaken mud hole of a town? I don't mind what they say. Eh? You don't, eh? Well, I do. But that other man, the one you engaged in Toronto, he's coming, isn't he? <sighs> he is not. Sometimes I think the Almighty wants that oil to stay in the ground. I'll just fix you some tea. Uh, Who can that be? If it's another letter from those vultures in New Haven, you can burn it. Yes? Is Mr. Drake to home? Why, yes, he is. Won't you come in? Well, thank you, ma'am. Someone to see you, dear. <laughs> you, Mr. Drake? The one who's brilling for oil? I am. I am also the Mr. Drake, who is Titusville's number one contribution to national laughter. And if you've come in anticipation of a jolly little chuckle, I suggest you get the devil out of here. Oh, no, sir. No, sir. Nothing like that. The fact is, I come to see if maybe I could drill your well for you. You want to drill my well? Of course, I won't guarantee nothing will come out of it after I got it dug, but... Well, sir, I'll be honest with you, Mr. Drake. I got four sons, all big fellas. The drilling business is slow. We ain't been eating too good. And I heard about you and the money you're willing to pay. Sit down, my good man. Uh, what is your name, sir? Uh, Smith, sir. William A. Smith. They call me Uncle Billy, where I come from, in Butler County. Mr. Smith, I have a feeling you and I are going to become very good friends. <laughs> Seneca Oil Company, gentlemen, despite your many caustic and indeed defamatory communications, I have remained true to my goal. Now it is at hand. April the 1st, 1859. Mr. Smith and myself will definitely commence operations. Your apologies will be accepted. Sincerely, your servant, Edwin Drake. Mr. Smith. Well, I sure wish we was drilling for water, Mr. Drake. 
because that's about all we got down this hole. Got so darn much water that the sides of the hole is washing away and I can't get the drill to stay steady. On top of which, we're down 31 foot, and that's where the solid rock begins. Mm, I see. Problem. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily, Mr. Smith. You got a way to keep the water out of that hole? I have. I'm going up to Erie tomorrow, buy some pipe. You mean you're going to pump the water out? No, Mr. Smith. We're going to drive the pipe down. Huh? Section by section until it reaches the rock. This will afford us a waterproof tube. You will then let your drill down the tube and um, continue operations. You are a son of a gun, Mr. Gray. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Does that do it, Mr. Smith? That does it, Mr. Drake. Well, then, let's continue with the operations. All right, boys, start the steam engine. aren't much interested in salt. Mm. Tomorrow's Sunday. We can't drill tomorrow. No. I'm afraid we've over-tempted Providence as it is. I know one way we could clear up our deficit. Uh, how's that? If one of them Lake Erie Northers should come pounding down across here. Lake Erie Northers? What's that? Wind. Comes banging across the country here faster than lightning. Uh, I recollect once when I was a real young fellow, we was drilling down in the next county and a norther come up plowy, just like that. She blew that well plumb inside out. And there she was, after the wind died down, standing straight up 900 feet in the air. Right into the clouds she was. Quite a sight, Mr. Drake. Quite a sight. <laughs> it's getting late, Mr. Smith. Yeah, so what we did, we, we chopped her down, sawed her up into three-foot lengths, and sold her for post holes. Cleared a pretty little penny, too. <laughs> yes, sir, let me tell you... Hey, uh, see you in church, Mr. Drake. Yeah, uh, I think I'll drop down here first and just sort of mosey around. Oh, that's fine. I'll, I'll meet you here in the morning. And don't worry about things, Mr. Drake. We can always get a job in the circus telling about this idea. <laughs> And what do you see down that dark hole this depressingly bright morning? Hmm? Nothing but black, Mr. Drake. Interesting. Can I take a look? Thank you. But I've already seen the world's most expensive vacuum. I sure do admire your Sunday go to meeting clothes, Mr. Drake. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, particularly that cane. Give me a lend of it for a minute, will you? Ah, pleasure. And now, careful there, Mr. Smith. If you drop it down that pipe, it's gone forever. I just wanted to check a little something. What? what is that? That black stuff on my new Malacca cane. Oh, now there I've gone and ruined it. I only wanted to see how far from the top of the pipe the stuff was. That... That's oil. Come up during the night. Oil? We have done it. 
My dear Mr. Smith. Yes, Mr. Drake. I wonder if you might just happen to have a barrel somewhere about the premises. Oh, I've got two of them, Mr. Drake. <laughs> Chance gave Edwin Lawrence Drake his dramatic role in the history of America. The simple fact that he happened to hold a free railroad pass. <laughs> but we salute him tonight because he had the determination to make that role mean something. As the first mass in history to drill an oil well, he made possible the magnificent growth of the petroleum industry in America. A great industry which right now is being honored by National Oil Progress Week. Yes, sir, to Edwin Laurentin Drake and to the Petroleum Industry of America, the Hallmark Hall of Fame bows in tribute. I'll be back in a moment to tell you about next week's play on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. But first, here's Frank Goss. While I can't attempt to describe the cards you'll see in the Hallmark Christmas card albums, here's a preview of some of the famous artists whose work you'll find represented. There's Marcel Verte, who won two Academy Awards for his artistic efforts in the motion picture Moulin Rouge. Doris Lee, whose paintings hang in art galleries all over the country. Saul Steinberg, the humorist with pen and ink. Norman Rockwell, Grandma Moses, Hulda, and many others. Also new this year on Hallmark Cards are the works of the Associated American Artists, as well as winners from the International Hallmark Art Awards. All in all, you'll find many fresh new approaches to the Merry Christmas greetings you'll want to send your friends this year. And best of all, these Hallmark Christmas card albums will be found only in those stores where shopping is a pleasure, where you can sit down and enjoy a visit with all these artists. At the same time, you're selecting the one design you want to have imprinted with your name. There's satisfaction, too, in knowing that whichever design you choose, your card will carry that hallmark on the back, which always shows you cared enough to send the very best. And now here again is Lionel Barrymore. You know, Frank, I really got a thrill the other day when I saw the Christmas cards I, I designed for Hallmark on display right alongside the Hallmark cards by world-famous artists like, like Norman Rockwell, Grandma Moses. <laughs> you know, painting has given me many happy hours, and I recall a quotation I've always liked. A fellow named Quintilian once said, the learned understand the reason of art, and the unlearned feel the pleasure. <laughs> well, Frank, to get back from the artist's palette to the whole Mark Hall of Fame, whom are we honoring next week? Next week, we're going to honor a man of great vision and foresight, Joseph McCoy. At a crucial time in our history, he found a way to get the plentiful beef of the Southwest to the needy markets in the East. How he did this is an exciting and adventurous true story. Oh, it certainly is, Frank. And as I recall, Joseph McCoy contributed to the growth of one of our most productive and important American cities, Kansas City. Well, I hope you'll all be with us next week to pay tribute to Joseph McCoy. Remember, you're also invited to the Hallmark Hall of Fame on television on Sundays, starring Miss Sarah Churchill. Until next week, then, this is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember a Hallmark card when you carry enough to send the very best. Our producer-director is William Gay, our script tonight by James Poe. Edwin Lawrence and Drake was played by William Johnstone. Featured in our cast, Virginia Gregg, John Daner, Polly Bear, James Griffith, Leo Cleary, Stanley Farrar, Lawrence Dobkin, and Alan Reed. Lionel Barrymore appeared by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer. Producers of the AMSCO color picture, Take the High Ground. Starring Richard Widmark, Carl Malden, and Elaine Stewart. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.